Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to today's webinar. We're going to give it um, a couple more minutes just to uh, uh, let people still who are joining us filter on through. Um, but it'd be great to know who is uh, with us today, who's joining with us. So in the Q&A section, it will be great if you uh, can put your name, the company you're calling or you're dialing in from, and then we'll give you a bit of a shout out. Uh, but like I said, we'll, we'll start in a few minutes just to let uh, everyone filter in who's joining us today. So we've got some people messaging us. So uh, good morning, Ian from Fusion IM. We've got Mike from WFEL. So good morning to you both. Good morning, good morning. Uh, we'll still give it another minute or two just to uh, see if anyone else let the rest of us filter through and then we'll start. But again, if you're just joining us, uh, good morning. Um, uh, like great to know who's joining us today. So if you want to just in the Q&A box, uh, just put the, the name of your company and your name of yourself and we'll give you a bit of a shout out. But like I said, we'll start again. Uh, we'll start properly in a, in a few minutes or so. Right, um, let's start. So uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. Uh, webinar uh, entitled Workplace Telephony for a Change World. Um, I'd like to introduce ourselves. My name is uh, Dan Felix. I'm one of the marketing managers here at VCN Group and uh, joined today by uh, Mark Knight, uh, who is our Cloud Connectivity Solutions Specialist. Uh, Mark will be uh, your speaker today, so you'll be hearing a lot uh, more from him as opposed to myself. But what I want to do just before we uh, go into the main part of today's webinar is just uh, talk a little bit about BCN Group. Some of you may be aware who we are as a business. Some of you may not be uh, not, not too familiar with us. So we've got some facts and figures here. I'll go through them in no particular order. So. Um, BCN Group, uh, we established 11 year, or over 10 years ago. In fact, April uh, this year was our 11th birthday. Um, we currently um, work with over 1,100 customers. Around about 800 of them are supported customers. Um, by that, we, we offer some sort of proactive and reactive support service. And amongst that, uh, that 800 customers, we look after around about uh, 30,000 individual users. We have a team of around about 180 uh, across the entire business. The majority of that, 60-70%, uh, is made up of someone in a technical-based role. Uh, that could be anything from pre-sales to uh, solution specialists, just like Mark, uh, to installation and all the way through to our uh, support desk, our support analyst team. Um, our support analyst team, our support desk team, is the biggest team by far uh, across the entire business. And we have a, um, a customer retention rate of around about 98%. Uh, um, 
we're based across the entire uh, north of England, uh, but we don't think of ourselves as just a northern business. We're a UK wide business. Um, we've got a headquarters in Manchester. Uh, when we've got offices uh, in Leeds, Chorley and Runcorn. Uh, a lot of these businesses, um, we've seen a lot of growth, especially over the 18 month. A lot of that has been through acquisition as well as organic growth. Um, but we don't consider ourselves an IT business. What we are is an IT uh, managed services provider and partner for yourselves. So we concentrate across uh, sort of five key areas in which we can deliver a whole range of different solutions because we understand that every business is unique and every business is different. So as I mentioned earlier on, we uh, our biggest team across the business is our support team. Um, that, that alone is around about 40% of the business in terms of staff numbers. We operate a pod system and we have a teams across all our offices, all four offices who are able to provide proactive and reactive support. Um, BCM Protect um, is all about cyber security, your cyber defences, making sure those bad guys are kept out of your network and keeping your data safe. But it's not just about cyber uh, criminals and cyber security, it's also protecting your data if you come across any sort of natural or economic disaster through backup uh, of data and also disaster recovery and business continuity services, which will enable data and information to be restored as quickly as possible. Uh, but also if the worst was to happen and say your office was flooded, that actually you can, uh, your business operations can be restored in a matter of hours and minutes, uh, as opposed to days and weeks of the more traditional methods through the use of the cloud. BCN development um, is all about uh, building applications and solutions to meet your needs. We're quite unique in the way that we have our own software and app development team internally as well. So we can build applications and SharePoint uh, environments that work for your business, that enable you to move data around securely, share information across your entire business and make the most use of them as much as possible uh, with your Office 365 uh, license. BCN Collaborate, well that's one of the reasons why you're all joining us today. It's all it's all about improving the way businesses, their teams, they work with each other, they interact with each other uh, through uh, the likes of uh, Cloud Telephony, Microsoft Teams, the better use of SharePoint and obviously 65 licenses. And, uh, and BCN Platform, well we've got all these great services, but we've, we've got to host it somewhere. So BCN Platform is all about where we host your data. Again, we are, uh, we believe we are, well, we are a cloud first business, but we don't operate based on our own agenda for your solution. Your solution has got to work for you. So we're very much guided by how your business works. So that could be uh, anything from an on-premise solution to a hybrid where you're getting the best of both worlds. So on-prem working with the cloud or a cloud infrastructure. You know, we um, we use Microsoft Azure for the public cloud, but we also have our own private cloud estate with BCN Cloud. So you can get from that, you can get a bit of understanding that we are not, uh, we don't just specialise in one thing, we specialise across everything because technology touches all aspects uh, of the way all that we work and all the different areas within IT. Um, amongst all of that, we work with a full wide range of um, partners. I'm not going to go through them all. Uh, if I'm being honest, uh, we've, got, we've got to save time. Mark's uh, chomping a bit to get ready to start speaking to you all, but you can get an idea about who we work with. We've got a lot of um, security in there, collaboration, infrastructure, applications, but the ones I want to focus on and that primary for today's webinar uh, are Ring Central. Uh, we are a Knight partner, which is the highest level of product partnership accreditation you can get with them. Um, we became an Ignite partner earlier this year and we were the first in the north of England to achieve that certification or that accreditation. Um, we work with the likes of Poly and Yaylink uh, for devices. They could be headsets or desk phones uh, based on your requirements. Um, but more importantly as well amongst all of this, we are a gold Microsoft partner. So um, we cover a lot, wide range of Microsoft um, capabilities and services from things like Office 365 with collaboration and content and productivity with cloud solutions, Azure, uh, data center and recently we've also become a Microsoft uh, Gold partner when it comes to application development. Um, and that's kind of it really from me. Um, we'll quickly just go through the agenda so you can kind of get an understanding of what today is about. So um, I will be handed over to Mark shortly. So 
Mark's going to be covering all aspects about Kalal Telephony uh, and the way the world has changed over the last couple of, well, especially in 2020, how our working uh, life has changed. Um, before I hand over to Mark, this this is a fully interactive session. Um, it's not just about Mark and myself, um, it's about what you guys are making sure you make the most of today and you get everything out of um, out the information out of Mark and myself as much as possible. So we, do, we will have a Q&A session and that will be at the, at the end of today's call. Um, but please feel free all the way through today's uh, webinar when Mark is hosting, please put in your questions into the Q&A section uh, and we'll come to them at the end of today's call. But Mark, without much further ado, uh, I'd like to hand over to Mark Knight. Lovely. Cheers, Dan. Yes, so today's agenda. Um, a new world. I'll go through exactly what's happened. I mean, it's fairly obvious what's happened this year alone in 2020 and, and the changes that that's brought for most organisations. I'm going to go through what is cloud telephony, what, what makes up cloud, tele, cloud telephony and that journey that we've taken over the last few years to get to that point. And, and the good things that are coming from that these days, um, how telephony can work with your existing structure systems, um, and the real business benefits of it as well. That'll then feed nicely into a, a demonstration of Teams Business Voice along with um, our partners who SBC with Teams Business or with Direct Routing, as well as Ring Central's Cloud Office solution, both extraordinarily good uh, vendors for uh, cloud-based telephony. And then as Dan said, we'll go straight into some questions at the end, which I'm happy to go through. Uh, by all means, stick something in the Q&A as we go and we'll go through it at the end um, and uh, we'll, we'll run it like that. For those of you who, who don't know me personally, um, my name is Mark Knight. I am uh, an ex-member of uh, Polymorph, who was the latest acquisition from BCN Group. I joined them back in September 2018, coming from a head of IT role. Um, I wanted to take a, a, a quieter life and didn't. Um, I've worked all the way from uh, from apprenticeship, uh, tier one, tier two, tier three. Um, I'm a Azure architect as well, as well as uh, being in the communications sector for the last 10 years or so. I've worked within the public and private sectors. Uh, you know, my, my passion is to help you organisations and businesses to achieve better um, without changing the earth that that's the the principle of it is to make sure that we can do good things together but not break the bank and not cause massive customer upset in, in that process i mean talking about upset you know the, the way we've worked this year has changed forever you know face-to-face -face interactions the, the good old handshake has, has all since but gone now um beginning of the year you know full office office party um you know having a, having a good old laugh with lots of people around you and a full office where you could have uh, have a good time uh, those days are very much gone you know we are working from from kitchen tables from kitchen worktops dining tables uh, people who are lucky enough to have spare rooms have converted back office bedrooms into full-on office suites now uh, my, my myself uh, i've nicked one of the kids bedrooms um, which was going spare and converted it to a full-on office and I've been working from home for the last nine months or so. Um, granted a little bit better than a side table, um, but uh, you know, for myself, it's making sure that I can be productive, but from anywhere. It's it's what do we do now? Um, you know, beginning of the year, um, I did a webinar of the same sort of thing. I was expecting three, four months of disruption and we'd be sort of coming back to normal, certainly be normal by Christmas. Obviously, that's not the case. You know, this, this is going to be a very long term thing. So it's what do we do with technology and how do we make technology work for us and make our staff productive whilst not being contacted or being in the office every single day of the week? Well, 66 percent of the UK at the moment have, have been working from home during the lockdown. That, that is a, a, a lot of people you know it's over the half half of the uk's workforce have, have worked from home and 41 percent of employees are likely to work from home um post covid so after all this is over and done whenever it's over and done uh, we expect you know nearly half the organized uh, half our staff from every organization to be working from home in some capacity you know 74 percent of cfos uh, cfos intend to shift some employees to remote work permanently um i'm actually one of those so i i am a permanent work from home employee um of bcn group i work from home uh, five days a week um and go to an office as and when required come to your site when required um but my my base is my back bedroom 
And 85% of businesses confirm that the productivity has increased in their company because of greater flexibility. That is a very real world and very true statement. I've heard a lot of people say, well, working from home, I'm saving two and a half hours of driving every single day. I'm not having to do the rigmarole of get up and go into the office. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't have to get in a suit. I could stay in my pajamas if you want to. And that, that is true. Um, and it helps people have a healthier lifestyle as well. You know, you can take breaks at lunchtime. You can go for a walk with the family, uh, spend your, you know, your 30 minute break more wisely rather than sitting in the, the corner of the office trying to wolf down your lunch and get back in front of a desk. Granted, not every organisation person has been doing that. I, I am a victim of that. Um, I generally don't take a lunchtime, but I do try and get away about five o'clock every day. Um, you know, my, my journey time has uh, gone from two and a half hours drive to a, a three second trot down the stairs. So, so life has changed and certainly for the better. And, uh, you know, technology has been a driving force of that. Zoom, I think everyone in the world who's used Zoom, I, I don't think I've really come across, across a person who hasn't used Zoom either in a professional or personal capacity this year. You know, their usage is up 191% in the last 12 months. Teams, more than 115 million daily active users, both paid and free these days. You know, 57% year on year growth for Slack alone and 25% growth on Google Hangouts. You know, it's 1.7 million active users each day on Zoom with over 12 million active users on Slack each day. Both all these companies have seen massive rises in their, their applications. And what does that mean for your phone systems? Well, you know, the, the traditional PBX is all but gone these days. Uh, about 12 months ago, uh, B, well, uh, BT, OpenReach and the UK government announced the closure of their ISDN services, along with the uh, eventual decommissioning and closure of the, the traditional tele telephony network, the PSTN network, um, to be completely closed by the end of 2025. That date has not been changed. They had a review just three months ago and they've not uh, they've opted not to change that date. Um, which is fantastic. We, we, we were hoping, you know, it, it would stay the same and it has. Uh, there was some thoughts that they would extend that because of COVID, because of the restrictions, because the uh, the networks in this country haven't been progressed this year. You know, there's been a huge backlog. But I mean, times have changed. You know, if I, if I do a quick history lesson here, 1983 to, 19, to 1990, well, in 1985, um, Microsoft was created. Uh, it's not that old. It's, it's uh, prior to my birth, but uh, it, it's certainly not old, 35 years old. Uh, in the same sort of range, you could buy a telephone, the first mobile phone uh, sold in the UK, three and a half thousand pounds at the time. That's just over nine and a half grand in, in today's money. Um, that also came with 1G. And effectively, that was the birth of mobile telephony. At the same time, um, traditional phone systems were evolving. The general post office, as it was back then, was privatised and BT, British Telecom, was created, paving the way for business services to start selling phone systems and start improving using technology. Skipping ahead to between 91 and 94, uh, we had a slightly smaller brick of a mobile phone, um, but came the invention and the launch of 2G. Around about the end of 94 also came the launch of the ISDN or digital network within the UK, which was a revolutionary thing, it still is today, which allows each business to now have a digital system within your office, allowing you to make and receive simultaneous calls, transfer calls internally at the push of a button, you know, set, set your phone to night mode, which then created the world's first smartphone, Nokia 9000. I was lucky enough to actually see one of these in operation about 10 years ago, um, that these things no longer work because the the, the industry um, towers no longer support them. But it wasn't an invention, it was. You could receive an email on it uh, using your, your 2G service and make and receive phone calls. Um, so Siemens and NEC at the time also did an integration with the telephony network so that you could make and receive phone calls from your office network to your mobile phone by way of a divert. Uh, seems simple these days, but back then it was an extraordinarily powerful thing. The first phone with WAP, web access protocol on that, uh, you could browse the internet. Uh, and we're only talking, you know, turn of the century, 2002. Uh, it, it's, it's not that tight long, long ago. And at the same time, uh, phone systems evolved, became more clever, more digitized. Um, the ability to have multiple extensions, the birth of an IP phone network where you could have your phone system connected to the internet at the same time. 
the good old BlackBerry and BlackBerry Messenger. Um, unfortunately, I was one of the victims of BlackBerry Messenger when I was a kid. Um, again, it was it brought 3G to the to the UK networks. That then accelerated the thoughts of, well, we can now deliver Fisher cloud-based telephony for businesses through a mobile network. It allows, with the invention of apps, um, the ability to add mobile applications to your device. So these days we talk about using Teams on your mobile or Ring Central, or having your Cloud Core Communicator installed as an app. Um, this was an invention back in early 2007 uh, that was created. Uh, again, the, the biggest drawback was technology. Technology was not advanced enough to, to operate, but it was the start of, of things to come. You know, 2011, the first 4G launched uh, in 11 cities just at the end of 2012. Um, I remember the launch. Uh, it was quite an exciting thing. I, I do. I still have a 4G filter somewhere or other that was I was given uh, back in the days where everyone thought they were going to get irradiated by 4G. Um, but then 4G now allows us to communicate at high speeds on the mobile on a mobile device. It means that your business telephone system does not have to be connected to your office. It can be connected to the phone in your pocket. Both video and audio can now be used over the mobile networks. Apple Pay was launched in 2015, uh, in, in the end of 2015. Uh, iPhone 7s, the iPhone device has really paved the way for technology to grow and your cloud phone, cloud based phone systems can now adapt and grow with that technology. Now, bringing it up to today, this is a OnePlus from last year. We've now got the, the new iPhones coming out with retina displays and, and finger touch. Uh, all this technology is also being bled into your traditional phone systems so that your traditional phone systems now operate in unison and in synchronization with your mobile device. It also means the invention of 5G. Um, you've probably all seen the adverts for a year in their 5G cities. Um, I've, looked at, I've been lucky enough to test 5G beginning this year before lockdown. Um, it is a remarkable technology. It, it will revolutionise cloud-based telephony yet again. Um, it may well start to be the end of the traditional voice element of your telephony, where video calling is your, your standard go-to thing rather than making a voice call. Um, which in a lot of ways is, is again, another great big uh, techno technological jump that phone systems have to be ready for. I mean, I saw this last night as I was uh, going through some some, um, some slides and updating a few slides here, and I found this. Uh, it's not in uh, British pounds. It's an American slide, but I think that is very relevant to today's world. You know, in the world of COVID and world work from home and connected to the internet, you know, there are some staggering numbers on there. Um, it was the 41,666,667 WhatsApp messages sent every minute of every day. Um, I, I think my wife's somewhere on that um, figure uh, quite highly as well because she's, she's forever on it. Um, but it just shows that how technology and how cloud-based technology is essentially in our in our daily lives and how business systems should and will be moving to that you know it's how do we do that well we need a reimagined experience um, this is a, a a extract from a forbes um uh, uh blog and it was you know in the in the world of work from anywhere voice only phone systems tied to one prem installations no longer make it and they they truly don't we have to have phone systems that are truly cloud based, truly mobile, but are not just voice. You know, the, the voice element is a very small part of a phone system. You know, cloud telephony itself. Well, in its very simplistic term, you can hear there's lots of acronyms, UCAS, CAS, um, PBX, IP. There's, there, there are a lot of acronyms out there. The biggest one is the UCAS, Universal Communications as a Service. It is about combining the different technologies available into a single unified platform. Effectively, the entire um, an uh, analog manual section of your telephony environment is completely removed and replaced by a, a cloud based system. Your calling, your video meeting, and your chat and presence, all forms UCAS. These days, we want it on any device using any mode of technology and anywhere in the world. It needs to be easy to buy, 
easy to use, easy to manage, trustworthy and reliable, global and open. We need to have kit that we know and trust will work 24 hours a day. We want to be able to have the phone system operating and be able to have Teams messages and meetings at 11 o'clock at night because that's the time I work. So this is what technology has done for us. But we also want to integrate. I have many, many conversations with customers around their existing applications. Lots of you out there use Salesforce, Slack, Dynamics, CRM. Well, we need to integrate with these devices. We can't have a phone system that is completely isolated like it always has been from any other application or any other part of the business. It, it, businesses can't operate like that anymore, especially with the work from home lifestyles we have. These days, we want to have a, a phone call come in. It'll automatically open up Dynamics. We can then feed Dynamics information about that phone call so that the next team who's working remotely will know instantaneously what's happening with the customer, what's happening with that call, what's happening with that order. So it's the feed of information, but using integrations to make life easier. And that's what we can do. The likes of Ring Central with Microsoft Teams, uh, with many other applications. You know, it needs to be secure as well. It doesn't matter what we do, it has to be secure. These, the systems these days are built on enterprise cloud. Um, they're built using Equinox data centers, Microsoft Azure, AWS, BCN's private cloud. Uh, these are all tier D compliance um, stand, uh, tier, G, tier D compliant sites. They also have to in, um, be able to use PCI compliant call recording. We want to have SOC 1, SOC 2 uh, compliance as well. You need to prove documentation to upstream um, suppliers, partners and customers that you are a secure organization in every element. Cloud-based telephony is no different at all. You know, the financial benefits of a cloud-based system are, are you know, very, very straightforward. They, there is very little up from uh, outlay other than physical time to insta install and physical hardware should it be needed, be it headsets or desk phones alike. Um, everything else is on a monthly rolling cost. It allows flexibility. If you reduce in your site, in your organizational size, well, your licensing needs to organically reduce with it or grow. Uh, you know, a lot of companies are merging by acquisition, by growth these days, BCN, no different. Um, your systems need to grow with that from 20 users to 200 to 2000, it needs to be able to, to, to move with that. We need a better work-life balance. Um, you, you know, it's proven that remote workers are less stressed, but better connected um, and they cost less. Cloud-based telephony will help um, do the switch off. I, I, I personally I have my, my all my cloud-based telephony phones to automatically go to voicemail after six o'clock every evening. Um, so that I am, you know, I'm not contacted, I'm not working. I set up um, overrides so if someone rings me twice, it automatically goes straight through to my mobile phone. So that if there is an important outage that I need to be part of, I can still be contacted. But generally, I'm I'm away, I'm disconnecting from work, giving me that work-life balance back. It, that's me personally. You know, I, I'm different from from Dan, and everyone else is different from each other. So we need to have a system that's unique to us. It needs to be productive as well. Uh, on the work from home lifestyle at the moment, we need to understand what's going on um, with our staff. You know, all our staff are working from 70 different locations with 70 different staff all working from home. We need to know, are they making calls? Are they receiving calls? Are they picking up the phones at the right time? Are they on the phone for the correct length of time? We need to understand if they've got quality issues. Um, there's no point in them saying, I've got poor Wi-Fi, that, that doesn't cut it these days. We need to understand exactly what's going on. Um, you know, it, it doesn't detract from the fact that if you're in the attic and your router's by the front door, you're going to have issues. But we, you know, from a technology standpoint, we want the technology to tell us this, that will help put performance-based um, performance goals in place. That brings us on to, to systems like 365 Business Voice. It's an all-in-one system. Everyone in the world is using Teams. I don't think I've met an organization this far that, that really hasn't adopted Teams in some way or shape. Um, you know, since COVID um, struck and the lockdown happened, um, it, the business voice has become the go-to application. Um, sorry, Microsoft Teams has become that, that go-to application for just chatting generally, having a video call, be it work or private alike. Um, and, you know, that is your application for use. But we want to have it 
you know, nice and easy. We want to now put our phone systems in there so that when we receive a team's call, our phone system automatically you know, doesn't allow that call through. Or if we want to have a call come through, we just want to use the one application. We're not using several different installed apps, making life easy. You know, it's an all in one uh, communications tool. You've got your chat, you've got your built in audio conferencing. Uh, it's a single app, be it on mobile, desktop, or web. It needs to be intelligent as well. You know, you need to call from anywhere on any device. Um, and that, that, that's what we can do. You know, cloud based telephony means that as long as you are connected to the internet in some form or shape, you can receive or make business level calls using your company numbers. Enterprise grade calling and managed within Office 365. And it's a single provider. You know, you, you're not paying several different providers, one for your PBX maintenance, another one for your SIP trunks, another one for your uh, line rental, another one for, for your PSTN rentals, another one for your fax line. You know, it's a single provider with a single bill and single cost every month. You know what your costs are going to be. That moves me quickly on to, to, to a Teams demo. Um, I call it Teams Calling because it's not just Teams Voice. Uh, within the Teams application itself, we, we can do many different things. We can integrate it with other suppliers as well. And um, so what I'll do is I'll show you the, the, the Teams platform. I mean, I, I quite often when customers ask me, can you show me Teams and demo Teams? Um, I normally say, have you got Teams yourself? And the answer is always yes. Well, that's the demo. You know, Teams, Microsoft have made it functionally simple to, to operate. Um, let me show you what I mean. So this is the team's uh, application. I've got this running on a, on a virtual machine at the moment. So this is my Teams demo account. Um, it's Microsoft Teams. It, it looks like any other Teams application that you all love and use. Chat, meetings, phone. It's as simple as that. When it comes to calling, if you've got Teams Business Voice enabled, which we can do for you, be it two users or 200, or if you've got it integrated with a third party application like BCN Simplified Hosted, or you've got Ring Central in there and you want to use Teams as that, that front end client, it's the same experience. Go to calls, dial a number. I've got a telephone number, I've got a Rexham one, which is where I live, and I can dial a telephone number. Dial my work phone, and it's simple as that. And I get a call coming through. Then if I was to make a call to reverse that, as you can see, I get an income call, and it's as simple as that. From a customer perspective, all they hear is a ringtone. From your employee's perspective, they're just using Teams. It doesn't matter what the back end system is, it's the same front end use. It makes it really easy for users to operate, to understand. Now, if I'm set as do not disturb, this is my BCN identity, um, I'm do not disturb, so don't ring me. If you do, it'll go straight through to my voicemail. Now, I can have a set of speed dials, I can set up a speed dial group of numbers, I can look at my contacts if they're synchronized. I can look at my history so I can see what calls have been made. I can also see if I've got any missed calls. I can also look at my voicemail. So I've got a voicemail here at the moment. I rang myself earlier this morning and I can click on that at any point. And I've got a, a text translation of that, that that audio file. This is me speaking to myself. Um, now, the only thing it's got wrong is my name. It, everything else is absolutely perfect, including the telephone number that I spoke out. It's picked up the number absolutely perfectly. So at that point, I can highlight this, copy it and paste it into my dialer number. I don't have to listen to the six and a half minute voicemail um, to, to get one bit of information. 
there is nothing else to show with a team's business or a team's calling. And that's the beauty of the system. It is it's so simplistic to use that it doesn't need lots of explaining. And that's the way that phone systems should be. In terms of the administration and the management of it, this is built with uh, simplified hosted. So this is our own hosted system, as you can see. So there's um, Alan, the, the, the user I'm using at the moment. I've got another one in there called Ivor Williams. And I can look at the analytics. I can see what's going on. So I can see how many calls we've had, how many have been answered, how many unanswered, how many are engaged, how many inbound, how many outbound, you know, real basic information that I want to know straight away. I want to look at it based on time, on day. I can scroll down. I can look at the actual calls, be it inbound or outbound. I can play the voice recordings of each of each call. So all my calls with the BCN certified hosted are all recorded, both inbound and outbound. So I can play back the voice recording at any time. I can see where it went from, calling who, what location it was. I can see any other de details about that call in history as well. And I can play it back at any time. I could put a few notes on there and some reference information if I needed to. But we can also set up some automated reports. So if you want to have management reports emailed to you every other day, we can have that done. We can also set up some, uh, some service reports so we can look at what's going on by each individual day. So we can filter out specific numbers or specific teams so we can see what each individual user is doing. We can also look at the core quality from a Microsoft perspective. So this is the core quality dashboard within Microsoft Teams. And again, it'll show you how many calls are good, poor, unclassified. And you can drill in and find out what's going on. We can also look at the call quality um, uh, service agreement. So this is Microsoft's base SLA to say whether calls are good or not. The system they've signed now. Apologies, <laughs> I've left that screen a bit blank for too long and it's signed me out of Teams. As a security measure, it of course signs you out if you're inactive for a long time. Okay, that's frozen. But in terms of Ring Central, if you didn't want to have the Teams side of things, we could push it into Ring Central. So Ring Central has its own desktop applications. Again, if you've got your message, video, and phone, Missed calls, call recordings, voicemails. Again, if you've got voicemails on there, it'll have the same thing. We can see a transcript of each individual one as well. We can look at all your calls as well. We can also push all data out to Power BI. We click out and it's internal calls, external calls. We can have uh, reports set up that have a mixture of teams based messaging and your voice messaging. So you can understand how many people are doing internal teams meetings and how many people are doing external um, voice calls and understand the, the analytics behind it. You can have it by client. So you can find out how many people are uh, taking calls on their desktop machine, how many are on their iPhones. Understand what's going with its technology. And like I say, you know, the alternatives, well, Teams is just a, a, a front end. Um, it, it's, a, it's a customer storefront for, for your users to use. Ring Central gives you the ability, uh, Microsoft Teams give you the ability to integrate within um, the Teams infrastructure. So, for example, here, Ring Central is directly integrated with Teams. It allows you to use the Ring Central infrastructure with within the team's client it also allows you to then use all the applications available to you so for productivity for crm use now we can also do it by based on what exactly you require so for example you know if you just want ring central you don't use microsoft teams fine not a problem ring central has its own messaging and chat applications so we can use that if you want to use simplified hosted we can use it with the native calling plan within teams 
and then we can also put certified handsets in. So if you wanted uh, Teams handsets deployed to desks, uh, we can use the Yale Link hardware, which is certified within Teams to produce that for you. So then, of course, you can integrate it with other applications within the existing Microsoft Office infrastructure. So we can make and receive calls using WebRTC, which is a, a Chrome based client, um, which can go on your desktop machines. Then we've also got the Simplified UC, which is BCN's white label that solution, um, as I demoed just then within the Teams client. It allows for greater abilities and greater configuration than the Microsoft base. Um, uh, licensing allows itself within Teams Voice. It also allows for things like call recording, more minutes, international calling, um, different calling IDs, different telephone numbers, depending on what sort of setup you have. Again, I showed you the analytics. We can look at the analytics based on that. We can see about uh, call recording, all calls recorded inbound and outbound. But then, like I say, if you don't want to go with Microsoft, you're not using Microsoft Teams or you're using um, Teams within your remote desktop application. Well, VoIP doesn't work in remote desktop for, for, um, for technical reasons. So we want to be looking at, well, I need the phone client outside of the remote desktop. Don't really want to use Teams because if you have a Teams call, of course, Teams will ring both devices at the same time. It can't differentiate between the two. Well, that's not helpful. So what we can do is we, look, we can look at using Ring Central. Ring Central use message, video and phone. They have their own content chat. They have their own systems for, for, for telephony. They're not a small company. Um, they were founded in 99. They've got a 1.2 billion euro uh, dollar turnover every year and they've been growing year on year by nearly 30 percent. 29 data centres based all over the planet. Our nearest ones are in the UK. They've got two UK data centres along with some EU data centres that we geolocate to as well. Over 5,000 in the workforce, 41 countries with a local service. They've got their own desktop app. So if you don't want to use the Teams application, this is perfect for you. You can use a unified app, both for meetings, for messaging and for phone. They don't use Teams, they'll use Zoom as their backend provider for, for uh, video calling. So you've got regulatory compliance, you've got secured and encrypted meetings going through. It's a single faced application, whether it be desktop, mobile or um, web. It's a single application, again, using that you know, any mode, any device, any channel, anywhere. They're also open as well. Like I say, we can use it within your dynamic CRM, your Salesforce CRM or uh, any other sort of third party applications you may be using that have an open API stack or the ability to integrate with. We can look at integrating with that. You can start on a chat, have a video call then go straight to a voice call or go back to the chat. It's really easy to jump between all these different applications. There's no downloads, there's no software to run. You can join it straight from the web, so it makes life simpler. So if you are communicating with customers, of course, at the moment, if you use Microsoft Teams, the predefined requirement is that you have a Microsoft identity to use Teams or to be a recipient of Teams. They're working on making that better, but at the moment it's you have to be a recipient of. So we can look at making things easier and making things better. It's an open platform. Like I say, we can integrate, but it's also secure, trusted and reliable. In terms of the actual application, like I say, message, video, phone, contacts synchronized from both my Ring Central account, my Microsoft account, and my other Ring Central identity. So I've got synchronization across the platform. I can also send and receive faxes using the desktop application as well. Currently set myself to do not disturb, but I can change my disposition. This also takes my disposition from Microsoft Teams. So if I've set myself to do not disturb in one, it'll push to the other. If I'm in a, in a meeting in Teams, it'll show I'm in a meeting in Ring Central and vice versa. So you've got synchronization between your devices. And that is. Apologies. So 
what can you take away from from today? It's a lot of information I've, I've thrown out there, a lot of different ways that we can do things. You know, cloud telephony is a, a fantastic solution um, for every organization, be it big or small. Um, but if you're wondering how can you make it work for yourselves, well, speak to me. Um, I'm more than happy to have a, a 30 minute consultation with you. It's it's no hassle, no fear. Um, uh, and you don't have to come with us. You know, it is a completely open, honest conversation. We go through what you're currently using, why, what your staff are doing, and then look at phone systems to sue. I, I, I always pride myself in not giving you a taped up box. We open that box, we understand what exactly your organization requires and then make it work for you. Um, I can also send, I'll also send out a copy of the slide desk. Um, so if anyone's got any questions around that. Um, and effectively that that's my presentation in a nutshell. Does anyone have any questions uh, this far? Uh, Thanks, Mark. So, yeah, um, the, the floor is open really for, for you guys. Um, if you've got any questions, please put them into the Q&A uh, box or uh, part of your window and um, we'll read those questions out. So I've got, Mark, in the meantime, I've got a question uh, for you. How quickly is it to uh, potentially to move away from more complex on-premise uh, cloud to left, uh, sorry, not cloud to left me, but on-premise uh, telephony infrastructures to the cloud? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, every organization is different. Um, I've migrated, you know, 10 user systems in half a day um, and they didn't require numbers, so it was really easy. Um, more complicated customers, it's all around your numbering. Numbering is the biggest thing. So if you have 150 direct dials that all your customers know, and those direct dials are with several different providers, it makes porting them complicated. Um, doesn't make it impossible, it just makes it complicated. So what we do is we, we look at that from a project plan perspective and go, right, well, day one, we're gonna start building the system, but at day 60, your numbers will be in the system. Um, so we'll plan in that migration. Um, again, that's what BCN do. We're there to, to completely handhold, walk you through the entire process um, at every step of the way, including, you know, post go live support. Uh, we, we won't just deliver the system and then run away. You know, like Dan said, we're an MSP. Um, we, we're there to provide your your infrastructure and your network and your IT support as well as your telephony system. You know, that, that's what makes going telephony through us a, a good thing. Lovely, thanks, Mark. Uh, we've had uh, one question through. Um, so it's from Ian. So currently use open source Trickbox free PBX SIP phone system and looking to improve integration of desk phone into MS. Is that is that at all possible? Yes. Um, uh, yeah, it depends which version of free PBX you're using. Uh, if it's a distro version, you might have issues. Um, and it also depends what type of lines you're running out of your organization. What you've got to think and bear in mind is when you're pushing to a cloud-based application, much like Microsoft Teams, um, your internal organization is receiving a call and making a call at the same time as you're pushing that, that SIP trunk out. So you need to make sure whether your organization, your premise can take that sort of um, uh, architecture. But I'm more than happy to you know, take that offline and we can have those conversations. Great, thanks, Mark. Um, Another question um, from myself, Mark. Um, so in terms of a cloud telephony system, wh where do you think 2021 is going to take us in terms of this modern workplace experience? Again, that's a really good one. You're firing these good ones off today, Dan. Well, I know, yeah, I'll try my best. <laughs> um, I mean, Microsoft Teams, that's what everyone's talking about. That is the thing at the moment. You know, that that is the, the fad that everyone's on. Well, it's not really a fad, it's a thing. Um, business voice itself is in its infancy at the moment. It is maturing and maturing very fast. Microsoft are pushing millions and millions and millions of dollars into it, um, as well as a lot of staff. You know, there's a lot of developers building the application. Um, the monthly rollouts for Teams at the moment are in excess of 150 improvements. Some are bug fixes, some are small things, some are very large things like multi-site attendance, uh, the together mode, things like that make communications better. 2021, they've acquired a couple of different uh, companies that specialize in SIP-based telephony and existing hardware phones, making the integration easier um you know it, it's a watch this space much like uh, ring central again they're, they're pushing billions of 
dollars into their application stack. Um, they are a rival of Microsoft. They're both Gartner Quadrant leaders. Um, you know, their, their dots on the quadrant literally overlap each other at the moment. Um, both are very, very strong um, players in the field. And, and work together. That's the big thing. You know, it, they're, they're not fighting against it. It's not the old days of uh, of Apple, Macintosh, and Mac, uh, Windows, where the the two organisations wouldn't talk. Nothing would work together. These days, it's about togetherness. It's about being uh, working, you know, side by side and integrating with each other. And that that's what the, all of them are doing now. And in terms of devices, do do, do you need a desk phone? Can you use headset? What we what's available? Well, everything. I, I mean, it, it's entirely up to the end user. You know, if you want a headset personally, have a headset. If you want to have a physical desk phone and a, a wireless headset, you can have any combination that you want. It's all around individual personal needs and wants, especially with the work from home lifestyle. I have physical desk phones in my office at home because my I've built my internal infrastructure to take it. Um, I know Dan, you're working on a wireless headset at the moment um, because that's the way you like to work everyone is different and everyone's individual um you know we partner with yearlink we partner with polycom um or poly uh, to, to deliver you know headsets poly plantronics you know world leading brand yearlink physical hardware world leading brand um we can also deliver you know right up to teams room systems as well so it's not just about end user level we're talking about full-on meeting rooms we can deliver that as well using yearlink and poly technology great lovely thanks mark um I think that's really it from the question side. So um, just before um, we wrap up uh, today, it's a couple of a uh, couple of bits I want to bring to everyone's uh, attention. Um, so we have a number of webinars, other webinars as part of our winter schedule uh, coming up this side of Christmas. Um, we um, we've got a Microsoft Teams webinar that's happening on the 8th of uh, December. So uh, next Tuesday, um, we're all conscious that Microsoft Teams has become um, the most popular or the biggest uh, collaboration platform of choice, especially in the current climate 2020. So um, that webinar just goes through a little bit more detail of what Teams can offer businesses, as well as some of the new functionality that's, that's come out over the last couple of months that could be a real benefit and how you can um, integrate it more into business in terms of uh, other applications. Um, we've also got a uh, it's entire keeping your infrastructure ahead of the game webinar that's on Tuesday the 15th of December that's with our partners at ConnectWise. Uh, that webinar explores the um, the reasons why businesses should take more of a proactive approach when it comes to uh, keeping on top of their um, their infrastructures through proactive monitoring and patch management in particular. Um, we're coming across numerous customers and numerous other businesses as well who are uh, the vast majority of the staff are still working from home and that's uh, meant that their uh, devices, their laptops, their computers they're working off are not part of the network so are missing out on um, important um, important patches that are coming out leaving them unsecure unsupported so uh, that explores the reasons why businesses should do that and the final one is um is entitled are your end user credentials enough to protect your business again very similar to the first with people more of us working from home i'm probably working at home uh, a lot more uh, with the shift of our uh, work patterns our work habits where we're we wanting to base ourselves um Devices are moving out of whether it's traditionally with being in the office, being in the uh, the, the company's uh, network security fabric are now out of that fabric. So are more uh, so are, are less secure than they were before, um, because let's be honest, not many of us at home will have our own firewall. We all work off our off our uh, home Internet connections. So uh, that explores how businesses can better protect their end user their end user devices and their data as well, even when uh, users are out. And I would encourage uh, many of you to join that um, that webinar. So that's kind of it really from us. Like I said, um, thank you very much for joining uh, today. Uh, Cheryl and Ian, thank you very much for your very kind messages uh, that have come through. I'm glad you've joined today. Um, and it will pick up with you, the, with you all in the next couple of days through your uh, your account managers and for your contact owners. 
Uh, we'll make sure you you get sent a copy of this deck as well, and we'll also make this uh, webinar available through our on-demand service. Um, in the next hour or so, or some point this afternoon, you will receive a um, an email asking for feedback on this webinar, direct link to a form that we have. We want to uh, continue to make these webinars as relevant as possible, but as best as possible as well. Uh, so please be completely honest um, in, the, in that feedback form. It's the only way we're going to make these better. But uh, aside from that, I just again, thank you very much uh, for joining us today. And uh, we'll hopefully see you again in our future webinar again soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>